I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking this video out. This is gonna be an awesome video for anybody that's new to FPV and just getting into FPV. If you're looking for your first set of goggles, this video is gonna have the best information you've probably ever seen anywhere on YouTube. Why? Because it's gonna be honest. It's gonna be honest information and it's also gonna be information that is from my experience with all of these different goggles over the past two years. Uh, I've been flying this one pair of goggles that I'm gonna tell you about in this video, which pair of goggles I use out of all the popular brands out there in the FPV community and the industry. Uh, if you've looked at any different websites for trying to buy your first pair of goggles, it's really confusing because there are a ton of specs out there. You're looking at image clarity, pixel resolution, you're looking at DVR versus no DVR, you're looking at different antenna setups. You're looking at box goggles versus these binocular style goggles. So there's so much noise out there on the internet. And I'm going to try to clear all that up for you in this video and help you out. Uh, if you do like these helpful videos and these honest, honest to God videos that we make here on the channel um, and giving you my just on the table opinion about this stuff without any bias, um, that would be awesome if you help me out with my Patreon down below. You can check out the link if you don't. Um, whatever, the video is going to be completely free for you to check out anyway. Um, but today we're going to talk about these different goggles. And we're going to start out talking about Fat Shark because it seems like everybody out there that, um, that I know around the community, Fat Shark tends to be the most popular one out there. And maybe because... Fat Shark is a kind of a community standard out there. If you want to upgrade to a nice set of goggles that functions well, you can buy a pair of Fat Sharks. The price is going to be more expensive. Don't buy the Fat Shark goggles that are the cheaper brand version of the cheaper versions of Fat Sharks. They're not good. The video resolution sucks. It's around 320 pixels or something like that, which is ridiculous. Most of the old candy bar phones have better resolution than those really cheap pairs of Fat Sharks. So don't spend your money, don't waste your money on the cheap versions of the Fat Sharks. Um, and if you want to buy a nice pair of Fat Sharks, you're going to have to put up some extra money. You're also going to have to buy a module for your Fat Sharks because Fat Sharks do not come with a built-in module. So that's kind of something to think about if you're a new guy. It's not just the expense of the goggles, but also the module that's gonna power and receive the video back from your video transmitter on your quadcopter. So um, also the other option is box goggles. Those are the big ones that go on your head, go right over your face and kind of extend out like this far off your head. Now, I don't like that personally because it feels awkward on my head. I just feel like, I, have, I feel like a dog with something on my face that shouldn't be there, um, and it's, it's very strange. So um, I just want to take those off as soon as I get them on. I will put a link down below for you guys for uh, the recommended economy version of box goggles. If you just want to spend like $40, there's actually a really good pair that you can get with two antennas on it that's called Diversity. It's going to give you a better penetration through trees and shrubs, uh, not behind buildings and concrete, because 5.8 video does not travel well through concrete. If you fly behind a building, it's pretty sure that you're going to lose uh, a lot of signal. Now, I'm not talking about flying around the backside of your house. I'm actually talking about flying around the backside of a, like a skyscraper, or a high rise building, something huge like that, or like a nuclear reactor. Um, you're just gonna go black and your video is gonna go to um, static on the screen. So a very important tip for guys, not flying behind solid objects. Uh, and, and down also dipping down into canyons. If you're doing long range flying, it's really important that you stay sort of line of sight between your quad or your wing to wherever your ground station is that's receiving your video. Uh, pretty much the, the general rule of thumb when you're flying long range is you're flying higher and higher as you go away. If you're flying lower and lower as you go away, you risk losing signal on your, your transmitter or uh, your, your radio or your transmitter on your goggles, so or your receiver on your goggles. So very important that you stay within line of sight, pretty much for any type of flying. You can fly behind trees and things like that, and the diversity setup is gonna give you a better option for that and give you uh, less fuzz in the video. So 
Diversity is great. Most of these goggles here do come with diversity nowadays. You hardly ever see a pair of goggles with just one antenna on there. If you see a pair of goggles like that, don't buy those. Those are not the ones you want. Uh, the older style goggles come with that. If you see a pair of goggles online that shows a little square on one side, little square antenna, and then a little clover leaf style antenna on the other side, that's totally fine. Little square antenna is a patch antenna and it covers a pretty good space out in front of you on this axis. And the clover leaf is covering this axis right here. So it's kind of doing everything for you all at once. And this is a great setup. Most multi GP pilots do use this. And I actually do use these goggles, these 5.8 goggles, for just about every type of application for my flying. I use them for long range flying. I've been uh, over three miles out with 5.8. It is capable. You, you do have goggles that are sitting here on the bench that are capable of receiving that signal back. But the key to that is having a transmitter that's going to transmit a powerful enough signal back to your goggles to receive. So you're going to need to run something larger like a, a 1000 milliwatt transmitter. Uh, AKK makes one. That's a very good video transmitter if you're trying to do any type of long range flying, whether it's a quad or a wing. Uh, these work in just about every different situation. So you don't have to have a giant tripod sitting out in front of you with a huge patch antenna or a huge um, helix antenna coming off the front of your goggles. You can't build a ground station that's going to be more powerful, but that's for the more advanced FPV. Today we're talking about beginner stuff here. And I want to tell you guys, you don't have to spend an upwards of $500 for a set of goggles. If you do that right out of the gate, you're probably someone that already has plenty of money in the bank account and uh, you're, you're pretty well set. You're not worried about money. That's not an option. But like I said before, if you decide to go that route, you're also going to have to buy a module. So if you buy the fancy Fat Shark HDOs that came out with the OLED screens, those are awesome. They do have bright screens, very vivid color, and a really nice DVR. Um, I have the HD3 sitting here with LaForge module. This is uh, about a $100 module. I, I would recommend LaForge over um, just about any other ones out there. The other ones that I would recommend is going to be the... Furious FPV True D module. It has two antennas on the right hand or on the left hand side of your goggles right here. Um, the Forge has it spread out so that you have your patch antenna over here and your right hand circular polarized antenna on the other side right here. Your sort of a mushroom or clover leaf antenna, if you will. So it kind of spreads them a little bit further apart for the Forge, which I kind of prefer. I don't like having them all on one side. Um, it just seemed to get a better uh, signal path out in front of me for having them spread apart just a little bit. You get your patch pointing out this direction and your clover leaf kind of covers this direction quite well. You can also angle your patch antenna by putting different angled SMA connectors on the other side if you want to point more forward. Uh, right now it's just stuck on here. This is a little 5.8 AX2 from Lumineer, right hand circular polarized. And this one is sort of facing off to the right. You want to angle it more toward the front of you. Um, very important. Also for guys that are kind of looking at the ground, I see a lot of people doing this and I do it myself sometimes. And if you have your patch antenna actually angled up just a little bit, when you do look down at the ground, like a lot of people do, that patch antenna will be pointing out straight. So um, it's a good idea to find some of those little SMA connectors that have a little elbow in them and it'll just give you a better signal. Um, sometimes I have to remember to, to look up because I find myself wandering down like this when I start to fly. So uh, just one tip for the new guys as well. Now we have three main brands right here we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about Amway, and these are the Amway Commander version 2s right here on the very bottom of the stack. Amway has kind of stepped up their game with this set of goggles. They made them really nice looking on the outside, sort of have this like gunmetal gray, which I really like a lot. They have a built-in fan, which is important. If you sweat a lot, it's really important that you need a fan on your goggles. Or if you're flying in hotter climates where you have some condensation, or it's uh, more of a rainy season type situation, sometimes they fog up. So uh, one thing to think about if you're new and you haven't experienced that yet, it's kind of a pain and you'll have to uh, uh, deal with that. Now a built-in fan is also great for interior condensation. If you have interior condensation, you can't get in there and just wipe the lenses off because it's actually on the inside of the goggle. So that's something to think about as well. Um, I also recommend the Commander V2s because they have a lot of options. They have a built-in module so if you're sort of on a budget 
and you want to buy a pair of goggles that is decent that you don't have to buy an extra module for the extra module like the LaForge or the True D is going to cost you an extra hundred dollars already on top of the price of your goggles and then maybe a couple extra batteries so you're going to be well over five hundred dollars when you're finished if you get a set of goggles like the sky zone o2s or the o2s or the o3s here and, and the commander v2s they all have built-in diversity and diversity is when you do have two ports on the goggles for antennas usually being the square one which is your patch antenna and the clover leaf on the left hand side there so uh, more of a stick looking antenna not the single pole antenna. The single pole antenna is going to be your dipole antenna, uh, which is on the Sky O3s right here. The Sky O3s come with these dipoles right here. You can see they're just like a stick. And a lot of times I just take these, I remove them. They do work. You could use these for the first couple days while you're waiting in the mail uh, to get your patch antenna and your clover leaf. You're going to see a huge difference in video once you swap those out it's going to be amazing it's going to be like night and day um, for the amount of static that you're seeing on the screen with the traditional dipoles so these are temporary antennas go ahead and make sure you get rid of those now uh, for the price which one would i go for let's talk about my what i call the working man's pair of goggles fpv goggles now uh, i would be considered like a working man a working class fpv guy mainly because uh, it's something that i do every day and I am constantly on the road with goggles. I never leave my house without two radios and two sets of goggles because I've been on location in different parts of the country and I've had a pair of goggles go bad. Uh, I've had, a, I dropped a radio, my FR Sky, my X9D, I dropped it on the road. Like the first spot we stopped to fly FPV, we'd already drove like three hours away. So for the rest of the weekend I had no uh no transmitter i had to fly my dji mavic which was a total crime um, so i was dji guy for the rest of the weekend poor sad little me but we um we have a few brands here that i'm going to recommend um, fat shark being one of the most expensive if money is no no factor buy the hdos by all means they're great they have a great dvr and oled lenses very bright and vivid screens like i said before if you want the working man pair of goggles get the Sky O2s. The Sky O2S model is right here. And I, I spray painted mine. Mine look different than the Sky O2s. The Sky O2Ss actually look white like this. So the Sky O3s are kind of hard to tell the difference when you're looking at the internet and you're looking at the website. They look very similar, but there are big differences between these two set of goggles. Uh, one being that the Sky O3 has, it's a newer design, it has newer PCBs and boards in here, and it, it's, a, it's a little more complex menu system inside this one. It is a nicer set of goggles than the Sky O2s. Uh, one big factor is the fact that the Sky O3s have a built-in fan with a button that you turn on and off, and the Sky O2s don't have a fan. I haven't had much of a problem with condensation on my goggles mainly because i don't sweat a lot during the summer which is um, kind of strange um, if you are a larger person these are going to fit you better the sky o3s are going to fit your face better they're a little bit wider and the chinese took these in consideration for a lot of americans that have larger heads than they do um, so they they made the goggles just a little bit bigger to fit americans a little better now the sky o2s for me I'm, I'm a smaller person, so these actually do fit my face. If you get a pair of goggles that are too big for your face, what you can do is take some of the extra foam that came inside the packaging and put it on the edge and fill in those gaps and also push in your existing foam faceplate a little closer to the side of your face and it's going to sort of fill it in. You can also come down below and put a few pieces in and make sure that none of those light leaks are happening. If you have a light leak, just fill it in with a little bit of foam and you'll be fine. Now let's talk about the Sky O2s. Why, why would I recommend these over a pair of Fat Sharks? Well, in my experiences, I've been using this set of Sky O2Ss for around a year and a half now. They've been out for quite a long time. That's like that's like five years in the FE community. When something a year and a half ago still works every day, and I'm powering these on and off every day, multiple times a day um, while flying with these, and I haven't had the screens go bad on me. So uh, one of the biggest things to think about when you're buying from a company is, is that set of goggles gonna last you for the long run. These are about $300.
they aren't the most expensive ones out there and they're not the cheapest ones out there. Um, and for $300, the fact that they lasted a year and a half so far, almost two years is, is amazing. Now the, um, fat sharks, for example, I had a pair of HD twos and I had my HD twos, the dominator V twos for a long time. And when I got the HD threes here, I decided to sell them. I sold them to a friend of mine online and he, he used them for a couple months and the screens died. So fat shark screens can die. And that was just an example of mine. Uh, they had been everywhere with me. They were my trusted working man's goggle. They were my everyday goggles and uh, very unfortunate for him that they died, um, especially ironically two, three months after I sold them to him, uh, a huge bummer. But that's one thing to think about quality of your screens. Um, I've heard some people say that they're not a big fan of the Fat Shark DVRs on here. Some of the other DVRs have a little bit better resolution and will give you a better um, uh, video to, to upload back to the internet. Uh, and it'll just look a little clearer. And there's big differences between each individual set of DVRs versus another. Just because they're a $500 pair of goggles doesn't mean that they're going to have a very expensive DVR built into them. Um, I've heard people say that some of those DVRs and some of the more expensive brand goggles cost about $10 on the manufacturer side. So it seems like they could upgrade the DVR inside a $500 pair of goggles. It's just crazy that you spend that much money and you get a $10 DVR built into a $500 set of goggles. It's just totally insane. So uh, the DVR in the Sky O2S version, you've seen it in most of my videos. It looks decent. It also has a lot to do with what type of camera that you're running on your quadcopter or your FPV plane. So um, I haven't had any issues with the built-in module bays right here. Some people might be scared that the fact that these do have a built-in module set up here they're not removable but again i haven't had any issues with it and they in my opinion they work just as good as something else out there like the laforge or the true d um, and it also has a lot to do with which antennas you decide to put on here i'm using a fox here pagoda on this side and i'm using a, a standard immersion rc patch antenna which a lot of people hate but it actually works just fine uh, there are more expensive patch antennas that you can spend out there. You can spend an upwards of $150 on a, on a huge patch antenna with very nice reception. And you can go as crazy as you want with that. But um, these are not a real expensive brand setup for my antennas right here. And they work great for proximity and for long range. Even flying on 5.8 long range with this setup with one of my wings. I had an AKK transmitter on there transmitting up to 1000 milliwatt. And on this very pair of goggles right here, I was still able to get transmission uh, about three miles out. So you're going you're gonna to be able to get plenty of video back to your goggles with this set. And it also has a lot to do with the transmitter that you have on your aircraft. So a uh, high power transmitter and a goggle setup like this will, will do just fine for $300. You, you, don't, you honestly don't have to spend $500 on a pair of goggles, I, I swear to God. And I like to fly what works for me, and I'm going to recommend that you guys do the same for you. Uh, if, if, in your opinion, if you have had a pair of Sky O2 S's and you've flown them for about a week to two weeks and you formulated opinion and uh, you want to share your experiences down below in the video, uh, feel free to. And this is just my experience that I'm telling you guys uh, so that some of the new guys can, can get an educated opinion on a, on a set of goggles that's really honestly not very popular out there. Uh, there are a lot of goggles out there that are kind of bandwagon goggles that are the, the you know, the, the popular set of goggles out there. Uh, Fat Shark being the most popular pair out there. Um, they are good. Yes. Fat Sharks are good. Um, but I'm not sure that you're paying for, um, screens or DVRs that are any more expensive component wise from the factory than another competitor brand like Amway or sky zone. So, um, keep that in mind. You, you don't really know what the components are inside these goggles. So testing them is super important from reviewers so that you guys can, can know what's really up with these. But let's go ahead and take a little closer look at the fat shark HDOs. 
I'll tell you a little bit about the screen specs on those. We'll show those here on the screen. I don't have a pair of them uh, because they haven't been sent to me. They're very expensive and some of the uh, retailers decided not to send me a pair. Too bad for them because we could have done a lot of sales on those because they are some of the most awesome goggles out there on the planet right now. The HDOs are very big favorites with a lot of people, but then again, the price is like super high. If money's no object, just buy those. I'll put a link down below and you can grab some up. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Commander V2s. I'll give you my opinion on those and we'll talk about the screens on those and the options. And we'll also talk about my favorites here of the bunch, the Sky O2 uh, S version. Make sure you get the S version and, and I'll put the links down for each of these down below. But let's go ahead now and uh, let's talk a little bit about what's good about Fat Shark and maybe some of the things that I don't think are so great. Now we're just using these for an example and these are the HD3 so don't get uh, don't get all cocky and start making comments down below. Oh, those are the HD3s. I know they're the HD3s. We're talking about the HDOs right here and the HDOs are 4.3 OLED display. So that is going to be your biggest advantage of buying a $500 set of goggles. Not a lot of other binocular style goggles out there right now have the OLED displays and very different from the older LEDs. Uh, these are just brighter and they also are way more saturation in the color and it looks very vivid. But like I said, it also depends on the type of camera you're using. If you use a really crappy FPB camera, it doesn't matter what type of lenses or even um, OLED display you have, it's still going to look kind of bad. So um, that's a big thing to think about when you're doing an FPV setup on your quad or if you decide to buy a quad. Now, the resolution on these, they're actually 960 pixels by 720 pixels. Um, you do have a field of view of 37 degrees and the image aspect ratio is four by three. You have an inner pupillary distance adjuster on the very bottom, as most of these do. They should be little sliders like this and it moves the screens inside the goggles back and forth so that you can get your eyes in focus um, because when you first put them on it might appear blurry to you but just look on the very bottom and make that adjustment right here and they'll come into um, into focus for you the, the interpupillary distance is 59 to 69 millimeters so that's how much they're going to um, move back and forth for you now the weight on these goggles is 186 grams that is without the battery on there and the new ones do support hdmi in which is super cool so if you want to uh, watch a movie on there you can do that and they also come with a battery it's a 2s battery and it's an 1800 milliamp lipo battery that's included with the hdos uh, which is kind of cool because 1800 is bigger than what they started out with. We started out with something way smaller, uh, but you're gonna have probably the best experience as far as clarity goes with the HDOs. They look a lot different than the other Fat Shark, even the HD3s, they look totally different. They have sort of a black faceplate on the front and the faceplate is actually built into the fan. Um, and these are as well, the HD3s have the same thing. If you want to save a little bit of money, but still get a decent pair of goggles, you could just level down to the HD3s. These are totally fine, but keep in mind, these don't come with the modules. They come with an empty module bay. So you won't be able to just get these in the mail and start using them. That's probably the biggest bummer about buying Fat Shark goggles. When I bought my first pair, I was actually at Sergio's shop in LA and I picked out a module to go along with it the same day. And I think I was at the price point well over $600. Uh, probably paying a little bit more since I was in a hobby shop, but uh, I was I was happy to give Pyro Drone my business. So um, you guys should check him out. He's also an awesome retailer and has tons of good stuff. Um, the set of HDOs, it did fix a problem that a lot of people were talking about and something that you might not know about as a new person, edge of the screen blurriness. Um, edge of the screen blurriness is a big problem with a lot of people. It really gets on their nerves. It feels like you're about to have a headache or something. Um, very strange looking to see blurriness. The uh, HD3s might have had more blurriness than the HDO. So um, that's something to think about as well for your purchase. Um, and, and honestly, the, the HDOs are very nice. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about them. Um, the OLED screens that they have are awesome. Uh, probably the 
probably my least favorite thing about Fat Shark Dominator series goggles is the fact that they include the DVR that's not super expensive from the factory. I think they could level up their DVR. Um, that might be the biggest con to me is the fact that their DVR is just um, not a very expensive DVR that's included in a very expensive pair of goggles. Uh, but let's move on to the next set of goggles and we'll talk about the pros and cons of those. The next set of goggles we're going to talk about is going to be the Amway Commander version 2. And this is the Amway Commander version 2 with the antennas that it comes with. It actually does come with a patch antenna in here and I'll show you that just a little bit closer up. It has sort of this two level design right there. You can see there's two pieces kind of bolted together. It says Amway 5.8 on the very back of it. Uh, and they have one of their standard cloverleaf antennas over on this side. Now this is a very, very good antenna. I've used these on actually on quads as well. A very, very nice connector that is um, sort of a nice solid SMA. I believe it's the male version on this end. Yeah, a male SMA connector. So it has a little post on it that screws into the female SMA and you can bend up this end right here to make sure you get the best signal. Um, a very good setup. No problem with signal clarity on these. And you have that button on the very top right here for turning your fan on and off. You have your DVR sort of, this is like a joystick menu right here that you can get into your menus and you press down on it and it'll start recording your video to your DVR. And your DVR smart card port is right here. So your SD card goes right in there, which is really great. That's probably one of the best designs. Um, having your smart card right on top is a big advantage and they have a little bit of a divot right here as you can see that you can get your fingernail down into and pop it out so um, some of the other ones like the fat shark dominators i'm not a huge fan of having the port for the sd card right in the middle now these are a little bit better than the o2s or the, the the second version of these they were a little bit deeper and i had to have some some type of tweezers to get the smart card out the the micro sd card out so kind of a pain uh, you also have a headphone jack right here which is kind of cool they do give you several different types of foam you have a thinner style foam that comes with these and you have the thicker style foam i chose to use the thicker style foam i like that a lot you also have a port for head tracking which you can do with these uh, head tracking means that when you move your head back and forth your camera actually works on servos and moves back and forth. Those are great for fixed wing type of airplane setups. You also have on the left hand side, most people are changing channels and bands over on this side right here. So long press to change the bands and short press to change your channels one through eight most of the time. Um, and you also have this little piece right here and this is your barrel connector. And like I said, this is a, this is a very short cable. I'm not a big fan of this cable. It makes you put the battery on the back of your head right here. There's a little Velcro strap. You just take that off. You put your 3S2200 on the back of your head if you want. These also have the option to have a strap across the top of the head. I don't like that, so I take it off, but it came with that extra strap. So I actually have three straps in total on this one. These you can take off and you can put some fancy style straps on there as well. So you can put some aftermarket straps on these, just like a lot of the other goggles. You can pull these stock straps off, which I, I usually do. Now this little connector right here, it's kind of cool. I like this design. It says 2S and 3S on there. And if you look at the very front right there, you can see there's a 2S balance connector and a 3S one. That's how this is powered up. So you don't have to have any extra plugs to make the fan work on this, which is really cool. The fan is on the bottom right here. And once you plug in a battery, you can choose right here with this button, whether you want the fan on or off. With the Fat Sharks, you have to have your balance plug plugged in here and the barrel connector plugged in as well for your fan to work. If you forget to plug this in, your fan's not gonna be running. So um, one other thing to consider about Fat Sharks versus even the Amway Commander V2s and uh, most of the Skyzone goggles. The Remember the Skyzone O2S don't have a fan, but the Sky O3s do. So um, the screen resolution of the Amways is 800 by 600 pixels. So um, a pretty decent screen resolution on here. I think when you get in the upper 800s, it's a very nice image on the screen. So um, that's, that's almost like 
getting getting very high up there and it is svga lcd display in here with uh, led backlight so it does have backlight which is really great um, and you can also do 3d with these if you want to do some stereoscopic sort of two camera fpv it'll make everything appear 3d on the screen and those are switchable between a 2d image on the screen which just means a flat looking style image to a 3d style image on here which is kind of neat now these have interpupillary distance adjusters on the bottom as well from 59 to 72 millimeters and these are sliders right here they just go back and forth which change your little screens right here and move them back and forth to get your goggles in focus they also have audio output which is kind of cool you could run your um, headphones right here or you could do it on speaker if you wanted to you hear your motor noise and the video format on these are also ntsc or pow that's kind of good for most people but really honestly it doesn't really matter that much um, they do support 720p and 1080p dvr recording so these have probably the better dvr built-in dvr than even some of the more expensive fat shark models and these guys also do record in MPEG format, MPG format, which is great, which works with most computers these days. It's a pretty good format for video. It also supports a card up to about 32 gigabyte right here. So don't try to run a 64 in these. Um, you're going to record hours and hours of footage with uh, a 32 gigabyte card if you're recording even at the highest resolution at 1080p. But like I said on these, it does have that built-in receiver module in here and it does have 64, it supports up to 64 channels. So you have a pretty broad range of channel reception with the Amway Commander V2s. But uh, let's go ahead and set these to the side now and let's talk about the other big brand out there. We'll talk about Skyzone. Now we have two sets of Skyzones going head to head right here. Uh, these are the dipoles that I told you guys about before. Just take these off. These these kind of, just, just to be honest, they suck. Um, if you're flying really close in or if you're handing off a pair of goggles or a monitor for someone to use at the field, I usually keep these for that instance if I want someone to see what FPV looks like for the first time to get someone stoked. Now, in between these two sets of goggles, these are more expensive. And the Sky O3s have a lot more options. They both have built-in modules, built-in receivers in the front right there. They both have diversity. This one has a fan. This one doesn't have a fan. This one has an optional strap on the top. And this one also has an optional strap on the top. You can see that little thread right there. Um, the HDOs, by the way, do not have that option. And the HD3s don't have that option. So if you need to have a strap going over your head, you likely don't. Um, these are the ones that that do that but this has something that the other goggles don't have i don't know if you guys noticed yet but look on the very front of this goggles look really close see that little pinhole right there on both of the goggles that is a video camera on the front of the goggles so if someone walks up to you and you need to get your eyes on them really quickly you just bring your finger up and hit this button on the side right here hit that little button see what that says that says camera so this little video camera is going to come on it's going to take away your aerial view right there on your quad if you can go into like a gps loiter or if you can land it really quickly uh, or if you're not flying yet and someone comes up to you just to talk to you you'll be looking at them and they won't even know that you're looking at them it's kind of a cool option however i guess the drawback of this would be that if you hit that button on accident sometimes i have done that um, just fiddling around with trying to find a button there and actually flipped out of fpv view while i was flying so um, I went to uh, line of sight view there all of a sudden really quickly, but press it again and it'll take you right back into the FPV view. So if you make that mistake, just quickly press that button. Now, both of these do have built-in DVR and you can record on this button right here. This is your record button. You can also, I believe these take photos. I want to say it does take a photo as well. Uh, it goes into really nice menus on here. This is your mode button. The Sky O3s have way better menus. They have an LED across the front, which lights up. Um, you can change channels and bands right here. I really like the way that this set of goggles is set up from the very top. This is really, really clean. You have everything there that you need to uh, get to with your fingers really quickly. And you can tell the difference between these big buttons and the smaller buttons when you're, you're inside the FPV view. And if you look at the very bottom, this is your interpupillary distance adjusters right there, which move your screens back and forth. You can see that there. 
it does that. And you also have head tracking on these as well. Both sets of these goggles have a port for head tracking. I haven't used head tracking much. I have flown it before on RC airplanes, but um, not something I do a lot. You also have audio video in right here and you have AV out. So something that the other goggles we showed you already don't have, like the, uh, the Fat Sharks and the Amway Commanders don't have audio and video out. So it's cool that you have audio in and audio out. So pretty sweet. Um, if you want to run the micro SD card on this one, it's on the bottom right here, which is kind of cool. I, I like it on the bottom and it's not in between my eyes. Um, much easier to get this TF card in and out. There is a little bit of a divot right here for you to get your fingernail in. And the same thing on the Sky 03s right here. Just a little bit of a divot. You also have a port for HDMI in, which the more expensive goggles have. Like I showed you before, the HDOs have HDMI port as well as the, H, uh, the Sky 02s S version have a micro SD uh, or a micro HDMI port right there. So if you have a little converter, you can output these two, or you can input uh, HDMI, which is kind of cool. So uh, this is HDMI in, by the way, not to be confused with HDMI out. Um, so if you want to watch a movie or something on these, you can do that. It would be cool if they actually had HDMI out on uh, both sets of these goggles. Now, one other thing that I forgot to mention to you guys about the Amway Commander V2s, before I move on talking about the Sky Zones for too long, these accept a battery from 2 to 4S, which is really nice. Um, it, I did show you that 2 to 3S plug right here, but if you get the other barrel connector, and this is a much longer connector, this can plug into the side. You can put this one to the side and plug this one in. Then you can get that battery down on your waist and use your standard XT60 right there. And so uh, you can go even use one of your quad batteries if you had your goggle battery fail on you, grab a 4S 1300 and you can power these Amway Commander V2s with that type of setup, which is a really a nice option. Now the Sky 03s do have a little broader field of view on the front of them. They're actually 43 degrees field of view, so a little bit broader than the other ones that I showed you on the channel, but um, that is pretty standard. You're not gonna notice a whole lot of difference there. Uh, and these are actually 800 by 600 pixels uh, resolution. So it's a pretty nice image display on here. And we'll talk about these versus the Sky O2s as well. Uh, and they also do record H.264 encoding for your DVR inside, um, which is gonna be about 30 frames per second and also supports MOV movie file, which is really nice and compatible with both Macs and PCs. These are also switchable between NTSC and PAL, so no problems there. They also do 3D option or the 2D option. So you can press back and forth if you want to do that uh, sort of stereoscopic FPV view or you want to do the traditional 2D view. And the Sky 03s actually do come with this longer cable with the barrel connector on one end and the XT60 on the other. And I would most likely stick to the 3S2200 for this set of goggles. Uh, you will get a long operating time out of that battery and you're not gonna fry the module inside. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't put a 4S battery on this particular set. Um, you can try it, um, but I don't see that it's documented anywhere, so you might risk frying your goggles. Uh, so you wanna be very careful about that. The other thing is that this one, this set, the O3s don't come with a goggle battery, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. It seems like it should come with um, some type of a uh, battery with these um, for the price that you're paying for these. And these are actually gonna be closer to the the $450 range um, for this set of goggles. So this is the more expensive version of Sky Zones, uh, but they also operate really, really nice. And these are the ones that I'm gonna recommend for guys that have sort of a wider style face, a uh, wider head. If you have a wider face, go with the Sky O3s. These are going to be um, an awesome set of goggles and uh, a really nice DVR built into these. So biggest benefit of Sky Zone is a really nice DVR and uh, it's my DVR of choice, even here on the channel, because I'm recording videos almost every single day for you guys. And I want something that looks good so you can have a nice clarity. Now let's talk about the Sky Zone O2s. These are my goggles of choice. You can see they're kind of, 
roughed out a little bit right there and you can see the white underneath the paint that's how they come they come with white but i put stickers all over them kind of customize them a little bit put a different strap on here you can get different straps from like guys like hot dog fpv has some different style straps um, a hot dog if you're listening send me some of those and i will show those on the channel um, now the sky 03s have 48 channels uh, available on that set of goggles the sky o2s they um, are also comparable to any of the other goggles here with a few exceptions uh, biggest exception right here is no fan you still have that little camera in the front um, and you still have just as many channels you can get 48 channels on the sky o2s uh, but the biggest benefit of the sky o2s is the fact that these are uh, just under 300 dollars right now um, I, I think if you can find a coupon that works I'll, I'll try to put the one down below for you guys if you want to check these out these are my everyday set of goggles these are my workhorses um, they have seen the test of time this is uh, almost two years worth of running these goggles and these have a resolution of 854 pixels by 480 so these have um, a very nice resolution and they also have head tracking on the bottom like i showed you before but the image on these looks decent and they're comparable to anything else out there um, so you have decent OSD menu inside here. You have a uh, working DVR, so you can go in and play back your videos. You can delete old videos that you don't want. Um, and the DVR is better in my opinion on these than the fat shark ones. So, um, very, very nice DVR built into these. And, and I appreciate the fact that these are $300 around the $300 price point and you get a decent DVR, which you definitely should it supports video formats in the dvr like mpeg and avi so if you're a pc guy you can set it to avi if you're a mac guy you can set it to mpeg and that's really useful uh, it's also recording at 30 frames per second so that's also really nice now like i said this one does have the built-in module and the biggest benefit to you is the fact that you don't have to buy uh, an external module to make these work the first day if you have a battery you're going to get everything that you need it's going to come with these little dipole antennas like the other one did uh, not a big fan of them but the the coolest thing about these is that when the day you get them in the mail you can just charge up the battery and go out and fly and put a micro sd card in the dvr slot you're already out flying and recording your videos the first day you get these so um, you can wait in the mail for your more fancier antennas and i'll try to put some recommendations for antennas that that i would fly with these um, these antennas happen to be still on there because that's just what I've been using and uh, I've been too lazy to upgrade. Now, if you want to get a really nice setup, you could put a helical antenna on one side and you could put uh, some type of uh, real ACC super big patch over on the other side. Um, that's probably going to be the optimal setup for the maximum amount of penetration that you can possibly get. Um, now, as far as battery goes on this one, uh, I did not get a battery with these, but you can run these up to about 12 volts. Um, you're going to want to limit these to a 3S battery. Don't put anything higher than a 3S battery on there. The 3S2200 is my battery of choice with these. They're also pretty cheap and you can get one of these cables. Uh, I believe this one did come along with these, so you can put that battery in your pocket and get that weight off your head. The day I did that, it really changed my flying a lot. It, it felt so much more comfortable and so much more lightweight to, to get these off my head. Um, that was a really nice change for me. Now back in the early days, some of the goggles didn't have compatibility with a lot of video transmitters out there. Um, sometimes the boss cam wouldn't work so well with fat shark goggles or the fat sharks wouldn't work so well with boss cam camera setups uh, on the 5.8 transmitters. So uh, the good news is that these work with all different types of transmitters out there including fat shark um, they even claim to work with dji walkera uh, boss cam and any of the immersion rc all of the run cam and akk transmitters all work with these so um, the 5a is pretty wide open on these and the module just works across the board which is really really nice now uh, these also have a binocular display and interpupillary distance adjusters and these aren't quite as fancy as the other ones they're kind of flat these are probably a little 
sort of harder to get a hold of, but they do have little notches that you can move them back and forth and um, adjust it to your eyesight. And one of the, the biggest reasons that I really liked the SkyZone series goggles is the fact that they have not stopped working yet and I've been using these forever. The other cool thing is that SkyZone gives you a really good value for your money. When you buy this set of goggles, not only do they give you a case with it, they also give you a whole bunch of cables. They give you audio in and out cables. They give you an, 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 an uh, head tracking cable, which is great. It's sort of like a little uh, S, S video cable. And uh, they also give you audio video out. They give you the XT60 cable along with it. Um, they give you two antennas, which is great. They actually do give you a video transmitter in there as well. Some of the other ones just don't do stuff like that. And I got a stereoscopic FPV camera with mine, which works with the transmitter that was in the box with these. So if you wanted to try out 3D video, that's so cool. They give you that option. And they also give you um, a sort of a standard style strap that comes along with it. And you get that over the head option in there as well. They also give you this face plate with it. You don't have to buy that extra. And they, they also give you several different choices for the foam insert which is really great. So um, you have a backup set of this foam insert. You can buy these somewhere online, I don't know, but if somebody d does know where to get extra foam inserts, I'm sure someone has a link out there, but you need to replace this foam insert about every six months because um, this will get super dirty from putting your face on here almost every other day. And if you're sweating on this, it really does start to affect um, your skin. I actually had kind of a rash breakout on my face because of um, some of the foam that I had on my goggles. And I couldn't figure out why I had a rash on my face. And then I looked and it was around my, around my eyes. And it was because of having um, a, a, a pair of goggles that I used so many times that I needed to replace the foam on. So something to think about if you do fly a lot. But these are gonna be the goggles that I recommend to you guys. The Skyo 2 S's are some of the most underrated best goggles out there on the planet. They support 2D and 3D, have uh, probably a better DVR than most of the Fat Shark goggles out there for about $200, over $200 less than the most expensive set out there. Um, and this one does not have the face fan. That's probably the only drawback that I can think about for the Sky O2S's. Um, they are very, very trustworthy. I would probably take these on a trip and have these as my only goggles as a backup um, and, and or not have a backup and, and be totally fine on a trip. Uh, these these have not let me down yet. And uh, this is, I can't say enough about this set of goggles. It's it's my champion goggles. They're gold for a reason. And um, they're, they're the winner today. They're the absolute winner for this video. And uh, I can't recommend them enough. And like I said, if you don't mind spending a little more money, just go ahead and get the Sky O3s. Um, a friend of mine bought these and he has really good luck with his Sky O2s. So um, highly recommended from me on the channel. And um, that's just an, my honest opinion. And the over a year and a half experience with these, um, I, I, think, I think you would like them a lot. If you don't like them, you already have them, make a comment down below. If you do have them, make a comment down below your experiences with them and uh, let the other guys know your opinion so we can all share our opinion here on the channel on what we think are the best goggles for uh, late 2018. But hopefully if you're a new guy, you have an honest perspective of what's out there and an unbiased opinion because, hey, I can sit here and sell you any pair of goggles. And if I was trying to make affiliate money, if I was really wanting to make affiliate money, I would be pushing Fat Shark to you um, because Fat Shark are the most expensive thing out there. Why not pump the most expensive thing out there? Um, well, I don't do that on my channel and I try to keep it honest. And, and that's why sometimes I put honest review on my video links because uh, I don't want to have a reputation that I'm the guy that's just trying to sell you um, the most expensive thing or the always have to buy the most latest and greatest things. These these goggles have been out for quite a while now and uh, there's no problem with them whatsoever. But hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed all this information and maybe you learned something during this video. If you did learn something, I would love it if you became my Patreon on the channel. Uh, I'm trying to get up to about $1,000 for my Patreon. Affiliate links don't make that much money um, and uh, YouTube doesn't pay a whole lot. And I'm going to also keep bringing the 
giveaways for you guys coming up. Uh, we have some awesome stuff coming up on the channel. New quads are coming out the yin yang because the holidays are coming up and a whole bunch of frames are sitting over here to my right. I can't wait to show those to you either. But um, I appreciate you guys watching. And as always, please do help others at the field. That's the point of the Drone Camps channel is to uh, pass this information on from the experienced guys to the new guys getting into the hobby. And uh, I really appreciate you watching. So I want to say thank you. And um, I really appreciate it. So anyway, guys, I'm Justin Davis. This has been the presentation of uh, Goggles 101 for you guys. So take care and uh, happy FPV, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.